So the recall effort over Governor uh, Newsom in California hitting a major milestone. Organizers now claiming they have gathered more than 1.5 million signatures that are needed, by the way. 1.5 is the marker you need to get to to trigger a special election. More than 500 California wildfires. New encampments have been popping up throughout L.A. in the last five months. The number of people living outside appears to have multiplied. There are now thousands of crimes a year like this one in which the suspects are homeless. One in six restaurants will not survive the pandemic. People are just bailing. There's a mass exodus out of California right now. You can quibble about the guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, but the spirit of what I'm preaching all the time uh, was contradicted. Today, we are going to talk about why Governor Gavin Newsom in California is being recalled. We're going to talk about how the recall works. We're going to talk about why people in California are angry at Gavin Newsom. We're going to talk about his COVID policy and the failures of his COVID policy. First, let me just say thank you to our friends over at Raycon for sponsoring this video. Let me first explain how recall works in the state of California. The way that it works is 12% of the last voting population, that number of people have to sign a recall petition in order to get a recall on the ballot. So that would mean about 1.5 million people would need to sign a recall petition in order to get his recall on the ballot. Then when the recall actually happens, there are two questions that you vote on. The first question is, should the governor be recalled? You require over 50% of the people voting to say that he should be recalled. And then you have the recall election, which doesn't include Newsom, it includes a bunch of other candidates. So the last time this happened back in 2003, Gray Davis got recalled, Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor because the ballot was split 1,000 ways, right? A majority of Californians agreed that Gray Davis should not remain governor, but then there were one million candidates who ran, including people like Gary Coleman famously ran. There were porn stars who ran as well. And Arnold Schwarzenegger emerged the governor of California at 48% in the polls. Well, this time around, just in terms of pure likelihood that, that Newsom will be recalled, the current polls show that there is not a majority of Californians who are willing to actually vote Gavin Newsom out of office. So you can get the recall on the ballot. But it looks like that first question right now will fail. Now, the recall election is not going to take place for several months. The recall election is going to take place presumably a lot later this year. When that happens, that means months and months of negative campaigning about Gavin Newsom. And there is a lot to base that negative campaigning on because Gavin Newsom is a trash heap of a governor. He's a terrible governor. He pledged that he was in some ways going to be more moderate than Jerry Brown. Gavin Newsom has presided over a massive loss of business. Hundreds of thousands of people have left California because of the business climate in California. He has pressed forward with plans for higher taxation. He has pressed forward with higher regulation. The cities have been made cesspools of homelessness. The living conditions have declined radically in places like San Francisco and Los Angeles. A bifurcated, stratified society has emerged in places like San Francisco and Los Angeles, where basically if you're very rich, you can live there. And if you're very poor, you're homeless. That's essentially what has happened there. That is due to a wide variety of state and local programs. Plus, it also turns out that the crime rates in California have been rising. They rose precipitously last year in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests, which were supported, of course, by Gavin Newsom. Policing in places like Los Angeles went completely down the toilet, again, because the state decided not to support its police officers. So you got a bad business climate, you got a bad tax climate, you got a bad regulatory climate. You have a terrible climate with regard to crime. You have a terrible climate with regard to immigration because there are sanctuary cities all over the state of California. And California makes every attempt not to have new immigrants to the state of California assimilate in any serious way to other sort of traditional American ideals. It's just not something California is particularly interested in. You've seen net outflows from California many years in a row, and that's been exacerbated by Newsom. Okay, you add on top of that the fact that Gavin Newsom has been a horror show when it comes to COVID, and that's the recipe for a recall. So Gavin Newsom has been pretty much a waste of space, but I will tell you something that is not a waste of space. In fact, something that will make your life infinitely better. I'm talking, of course, about these. Raycons. Oh yeah. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns, a variety of fit options, no dangling wires, no stems. Plus, Raycon has a 45-day free return policy, so what exactly do you have to lose? Raycons are great. They give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. So, if you're trying to take a break from screens, but you don't want to feel totally unplugged, Raycon wireless earbuds, those are the best way to bring your favorite content with you wherever you go. At some of these brands, you know, they're kind of one-size-fits-all. Not so with these babies, not with these Raycons. You can see right here, personalize the fit. So they fit into my ear, absolutely. Absolutely perfectly, like a glove, check that out. Oh my God, look, magnificent. 
So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash ShapiroYT and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. So this effort to recall Gavin Newsom actually started last year. It picked up a little bit of steam, but not tremendous amounts of steam. And then the COVID pandemic hit. And at the very beginning, the media loved Gavin Newsom. He was the best. He was incredible. He pursued lockdowns at the highest level. People in Los Angeles, I was living there, were locked down for months at a time. They are still locked down. Right? Lockdown is the preferred policy of Gavin Newsom. There is only one problem. Lockdown resulted in economic catastrophe. The unemployment rate in the state of California is 9% right now. The deaths per million rate is very, very similar to that of the state of Florida, where I currently reside. The difference is Florida didn't close. It was very funny. I saw a headline the other day. It said, California and Florida took exactly opposite tax on the pandemic and ended up with the same result. Well, they ended up very nearly with the same result in terms of deaths per million. There are a few notable differences. One, Florida is the second oldest state in America. California is the fifth youngest state in America. So what you would expect is Florida to have a lot more death than California because COVID predominantly kills people over the age of 65. But if your deaths per million rate is the same as California's and your state is much older, this means you have outperformed expectations. It means Gavin Newsom has underperformed expectations. If it turns out that all the policies that you pursued not only ended with the same death rate as Florida, but also ended with a far higher unemployment rate, 9% compared to 6.1% in Florida, and schools being closed across the spectrum, as opposed to being open in Florida, this means that Ron DeSantis in Florida did an excellent job and Gavin Newsom did a horrible job. And most people in California know this. There is a reason that major companies have left. It's a reason that Larry Ellison, founder of Oracle, is out. There's a reason that the founder of Palantir is out. There's a reason Joe Rogan is out. There's a reason Elon Musk is out. There's a reason that we took our 100 jobs out of California and we left. So what should Gavin Newsom do if he doesn't actually want to be recalled? Well, maybe he should end the lockdowns. The fact is the lockdown policy in California has been a complete non-success. So why doesn't he think about allowing more people to reopen their businesses? Why doesn't he make it clear to Californians that he wants them to reopen their businesses ASAP? Why not just start talking about refunding the police as opposed to defunding the police? It turns out that a lot of the poll data from 2020 show that Donald Trump's gains in the black and Hispanic community came largely because of the defund the police movement that people like Gavin Newsom have been backing. The lifestyle in California has declined rapidly because of lack of police. Why doesn't Gavin Newsom make alliances with the LAPD's union? Why doesn't he talk to the San Francisco police union and talk about cleaning up the streets? Which brings us to criminal policy. Why exactly doesn't Gavin Newsom push for the funding of new mental health facilities and a change in the law so that people who actually have serious mental illness can be more easily taken off the streets where they are living in their own filth and put in a facility where they can actually be taken care of. The fact is that homelessness is a preventable problem, but Gavin Newsom has done absolutely nothing to fix it. If he actually doesn't want businesses fleeing from his state and taking along the jobs, one thing he could talk about with his fellows in the Democratic-run legislature is actually lowering taxes rather than increasing taxes in the state of California. He could actually fight back against the teachers' unions. He could fight back against the public sector unions because guess what? He's the governor. He's a Democrat. The unions aren't going to go support Republicans in response. So unless he thinks that he is super vulnerable on his left flank, which is really unlikely at this point, then why wouldn't he just speak a little truth to power inside of his own caucus? The Democrats in California never seem to be able to tell the most ardent members of their own base that they need to hold off. And that is something that Gavin Newsom actually used to do. I remember I interviewed Gavin Newsom personally back when I was on L.A. radio on Local. And he said that the high speed bullet train was a bad idea. If you had your druthers, would you kill the thing? I would take the dollars and redirect it to other more pressing infrastructure needs. Then, of course, he got into power and it was, oh, this high-speed bullet train. What a wonderful idea. It is fairly obvious what kind of policies need to be embraced in order for California to become a better place to live. Gavin Newsom could do all of these. And by the way, he could get away with it because it's a one-party state and he's the governor and he's a Democrat. He's not doing any of that stuff because he's so afraid of his own base that he's unwilling to tell them things that are absolutely true and that need to be said to make life better for all Californians. I mean, if you want to look at a governor who's doing well, how about my new governor? Governor DeSantis actually left it to localities to decide exactly how to deal with COVID, which makes sense because people live in their local communities. We will never do any of these lockdowns um, again. Governor DeSantis suggested that you'd actually have to have an excuse not to reopen your schools at a percentage of the population. That, that's a good thing. He was actually encouraging freedom. Governor DeSantis has stood strong against the increase of taxes in the state of Florida. Governor DeSantis has stood very much in favor of the police. He has stood against crime. Right? All of these are things that have made Governor DeSantis very popular in a 50-50 state. Governor Gavin Newsom isn't even supremely popular in California, which is like a 70-30 state at this point. Now, here's the reality. As I said earlier, I doubt that there are the votes there to actually recall Gavin Newsom. Even if Gavin Newsom were recalled, it would 
take a splitting of the vote in order for a Republican to become a governor of California. But it is a sign that the Democrats who are widespread in California, basically about 45% of registered voters in California are Democrats, about 25%, 24%, 25% are registered Republicans, another 25% are registered no party. It turns out that, that the Democrat and independent voters, they are frustrated with the governance, they just haven't figured out the solution, which is not to elect people like this anymore. When they finally figure that out, maybe there will be hope for the state of California.